Hello and welcome to Studio B. Today I'm going to give you a summary of what you should have learned in POE but may have forgotten. Um, in Activity 3.2.3 we're going to be doing some beam analysis. So as a refresher um, we're talking about simple beams that are statically determinate. And remember statically determinate means uh, we can analyze them using the method of moments and our static equilibrium formulas some of the forces and the sum of the moments all have to equal zero. So the simple beam diagram shown here, this one has a single point load applied. We have two supports on uh, one on either end. On the right we have a roller and on the left we have a pin. Now the only difference between the beam diagram and the free body diagram if, is we have now abstracted the supports into their component reaction force vectors. So at point A we have two reaction vectors representing the horizontal and vertical forces. We call those RAX and RAY. And then at point B we just have the single reaction force because a roller cannot support uh, uh, loads parallel to the surface. It can only support perpendicular loads. In this case th those would be vertical. Now recall also that um, by convention uh, forces in the upward direction are considered positive and forces in the downward direction are considered negative. Uh, for this case and for pretty much this whole activity we're going to ignore the horizontal or lateral forces. Um, we're, we don't have any in this application. This is just a simplification. You would in the real world have uh, lateral forces such as wind loads etc. But we don't need to worry about that for now. So the only thing we're consider, uh, concerned about are the vertical forces. So the shear diagram is essentially, <coughs> excuse me, essentially just a diagram representing uh, the shear force within the beam. And with a point load, um, this is what it looks like. We have a single point load in the middle. And the way you, the way I learned to create a shear diagram is starting from the left to the right. Um, you diagram the, uh, for, of course, you would have to solve for these force vectors first. Uh, using your static equilibrium equations, uh, you would, if we applied some actual numbers to this, you'd have to determine what RAY is and what RBY uh, is, etc. And um, <clears throat> then the the magnitude of RAY basically is just what we draw here. So if RAY say were 50, um, we would draw up to 50. And then since there are no forces in between RAY and the applied load P, then um, that shear diagram or that shear force inside the beam would remain constant until we reach P. Now we have another point load and so the shear diagram changes instantaneously uh, from uh, the positive to the negative. And it remains constant again because there are no forces, no external forces, no external forces. Uh, applied to the beam um, from here all the way until the end. So you can think of the shear diagram as representing the internal force inside the beam, the internal shear force inside the beam. Now moving down to the moment diagram, hopefully you'll recall that a moment is uh, the, the product of a force times its perpendicular distance. So uh, if the force, the reaction force here um, as we move further away, then in the moment diagram, uh, if the distance is zero, then the moment is zero. And then the further we get away, you would expect the moment to increase. So in fact, that's the case until, again, we reach the center of the beam where the applied load P is. And then the moment decreases until we get back to zero. So these are the two uh, shear and moment diagrams for a simple point load applied to the center of the beam, as it happens. Um, and you should kind of learn the pattern. And those of you in calculus, you might go one step further and recognize that if we look at the moment diagram, then in fact the shear diagram represents the slope of the moment diagram. And then the inverse is also true. The moment diagram represents the area under the curve of the uh, of the shear diagram. Okay, and remember this is positive here because our AY is vertical. I mean, is an upward force, and so our shear goes positive, 
and then when we hit the applied load P, which is a downward force, it goes back negative and then back to zero at the far right. So this is a positive shear force, this is a negative shear force, and the moment diagram again represents the total area under the curve. So you could see since this area and this area are equal, then we go back down to zero at the far right because they're equal and opposite. This is a negative, and this is positive. So there you go. That's sort of a summary of, um, again, what you learned, a little bit about what you learned in POE um, and a little introduction into the uh, activity 3.2.3 uh, that you should be working on today. Email me if you have any questions and thanks for watching.